spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Lincoln Mercury. Nobody has more kinds of cars or more kinds of people. See them at the sign of the cat. By Goodyear, makers of the custom steel guard radial tire. And by State Farm Mutual. Almost anywhere you live, there's a State Farm agent nearby. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I love that. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Monday. We sit here 122 weeks, excuse me, 122 days away from kickoff of the 2024 season. And we have our team that's knee-deep in OTAs. We got rookie minicamp at the end of the week. We got things that are happening, and the more things change, the more they stay the same. We have been killed this offseason. You know, it was actually, it's cathartic for me because about three years ago, after the 2020 season, we started doing live streams on Sundays with channel members. If you're a channel member, you can join in and be part of the conversation. And some of the people have been there every week, just about, you know, from the Thomas Garretts and the Troy Daniels and things. Uh, you know, now we've got Angry Cowboy fan that's in there on a regular and Walker Wade and Stacy Schubert. You know, we have great conversations and it's great to let out your feelings and your thoughts on the Cowboys and your frustration and listening to people. It's kind of like if we were to go back through all of those programs and how it starts at the end of the season and going through free agency and then up to the draft, you know, there's a pivot point at some point by the time you get to training camp where it's hope. Because you start out in despair and disgust, and by the time the season gets here, you're hopeful. And the funny thing is, is as I was saying about history, is the more things stay, change, the more they stay the same. We're still dealing with the same thing that we were three years ago. Dak Prescott, the contract. We've got so many people that are like, you're never going to win with that guy. Well, the team hasn't been winning Super Bowls in the last 30 years um, beyond just Dak Prescott. And I don't know that necessarily bringing in somebody else right now is going to make a difference unless you do things differently. I don't know how we can kill and point the finger and say, it's just you, Dak Prescott. If you weren't such a failure, we'd be winning these Super Bowls. I don't know how we can look and see teams like the Eagles that go through and say, we have a need, let's try and fill it. And go out and get players. I don't know how we can look at a team like San Francisco that had a great defense that, you know, tries getting guys like Chase Young and Randy Gregory during the season after signing a Hargrave to say, let's have the best defensive front that we can. Let's have actually linebackers playing linebacker roles. Let's go out and get the best running back in football, Christian McCaffrey. Let's make sure that our young quarterback has a great tight end in George Kittle. Let's make sure that he's got receivers that are really good to throw to in Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuels. Let's make sure that our coach is the best play caller that he can be to put us in positions. I don't know how you see teams that do these things to do everything to win, and then we see the ineptitude of the Cowboys who can't seem to sign their number one receiver 
after rushing through to pay their number two receiver on one leg. When you see an Eagle team that locks up their both of their receivers for multiple years. Now time will tell if those were the right moves going forward. We, we won't know for years to come for all we know. And looking at the Eagle situation at the moment, things are rosy right now, but things are going to look a lot different next year. They're going to have a lot of bills that are due. And of course, how we can keep kicking those things down the road but as we have questions about Dak Prescott, they have questions about Jalen Hurts. Now going into his third offensive coordinator. Funny thing about Dak Prescott is um, he's always the center of every conversation when it comes to the Cowboys. Article yesterday um, in Bleacher Report, Cowboys rumors, Dak Prescott contracts, non-existent CD Lamb to be after a quarterback. Now the question you have to ask is, is CD Lamb waiting one for Justin Jefferson to get his deal? So that way he can say, I want to be more than Justin Jefferson, since they've got the same agent. And for the agent, it works because it doesn't matter which one of them's the highest paid. As long as one is one and one is two, he's getting paid the maximum. But is CD Lamb gonna wait until after Dak Prescott? You know, thought would be is C.D. Lamb would be the one to get done first. But we are also going by what the experts say the Cowboys should do. The Cowboys are the Mavericks. They already said, you know, come training camp. We got plenty of time to do this. And in my mind, I'm still looking and saying, because I, I'm getting beat down and said, the Cowboys, they haven't restructured anybody. They haven't done anything. They haven't made any moves. Well, the move may be that what we're going to do is we're not going to do what we've been doing, where we keep kicking all the money down the road. We're going to take our lumps this year on the cap, eat some of this money now, and start have a fresh start next year. Because typically what would always happen is DeMarcus Lawrence would get extended, you know, uh, or excuse me, would be restructured. You'd see Michael Gallup was restructured a couple times already as well, Zeke Elliott on a yearly basis, Zach Martin would be, and Dak Prescott. And that's why we're in the hole that we are now. That $40 million that's due next year is because you didn't pay it when you were supposed to years ago. Dak Prescott's contract was $17 million cap hit the first year, $19 million the, the second year, and $26 million the third year. And when you do that, it means that money is still owed, you're just kicking it down the road and hoping that the salary cap continues to go up and you can eat it, or you extend it down the road even further. But eventually, you have to pay it. And so that's where everybody's looking and saying, $55 million for Dak Prescott. Well, you got relief in the front end. Your problem is, you didn't do anything with it. You had relief for four years where you had some of the lowest quarterback compensation for four years, and you did nothing with it. And so if I'm Dak Prescott and I look and I say, I made $680,000 for three years and they didn't bring me any people to help make me a winner, like, say, the San Francisco 49ers did with Brock Purdy, why should I give a discount? What are they going to do with the money? It ain't going to, to, to help make the team better. At least make me the highest paid so I can at least brag about that. If the Cowboys were making moves and, you know, they said, Dak, you know, we just got you another receiver. We just got you another offensive lineman and stuff. You know, if, if we keep taking a little bit more of the money from you, we'll go ahead and get a couple more players. And you say, hell yeah, I'm on board with that. Yeah, keep spending that money on other players. I want to win a Super Bowl. But you ain't been doing that. So, the Dallas Cowboys, per this uh, article, which is talking about Jeremy Fowler yesterday, the Dallas Cowboys and quarterback Dak Prescott haven't had much traction on a new contract, according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. Fowler reported Sunday on, e on SportsCenter, um, the Cowboys want Prescott beyond the 2024 season, but an agreement appears to be remaining a long way off. But the negotiations so far with Dak have been described to me as passive or non-existent, he said. There really hasn't been anything going on. Um, so their actions are saying that maybe if they do sit on his 
uh, 61 million. See, this is where it's kind of messed up. And you're Jeremy Fowler on SportsCenter. You don't realize that they ended up getting some cap relief by restructuring part of it. So it's only 55 this million. You're still saying 61. Trying to understand that. But hey, I'm not Sports Center. Um, they'll figure out later what they will do with that. They have fis- they've, they've been fiscally responsible not spending any money, so they know they have to address this at some point this offseason. Now, this morning as I was sitting down here and everything else, getting my coffee, Mike Fisher was on live, and he was talking about um, trading Dak Prescott to the New York Giants. And basically saying if the Cowboys can't get a deal, you know, done, that they, they want to get Dak Prescott done on a deal, but they want to get a deal done that they like, that they could trade Dak Prescott to the Giants. Now, of course, there is the no trade clause that is there. And if I'm Dak Prescott, if I'm Dak Prescott, and I look at this and say, hmm, New York Giants, well, I would get to play the Cowboys twice a year. But then again, I look at this and say, that offensive line is worse than mine. They just got rid of their best weapon in Saquon. Huh, their coach, Brian Diabal, is he going to be there after this year? Um, do I want to go to that? Do I want to have the Giants give up a couple of number ones to the Cowboys? which will make it harder for them to rebuild with me being there? Do I want to do that and start all over? Or do I just want to wait another year, take the money from the Cowboys, uh, knowing that I can look really good, and then I can pick the team that I want to go to? That maybe, you know, the New Orleans Saints, uh, a team that's near and dear to where I grew up. Um. Maybe the Rams, maybe Matthew Stafford is ready to retire. Maybe I go with Sean McVay, and that's a team that looks and says, we're going to try and win Super Bowls. You follow what I'm saying? There's no reason for Dak to say, oh, let me just go ahead and wave my claws to just go anywhere. We've heard rumors that, you know, from Dan Salio that, you know, the New England Patriots were making calls about, you know, trading for Dak Prescott. Yeah, you can make calls all you want. But if I'm Dak Prescott, I don't want to go to New England right now living in the shadow of Tom Brady on a team that's literally starting all over. I'm not trying to get the crap beat out of me. And here's where it gets really funny because no matter how much things change, they really remain the same. Let's listen. Let let me remind you a little bit about history. Obviously, that would be a huge shakeup if something like that were to happen with the Cowboys. Yeah, it would be. And to Dan's point, I think what he's saying is Dak's not elite. Deshaun Watson is elite. But sometimes you got to pay the really good ones that aren't elite that kind of money that they need. And in this division, guys, if you're not going to go forward with Dak, if you, if you do, I'm say if you do go forward with Dak first, you're ahead of the game. You got the Giants. Is Daniel Jones the right guy? They're hoping he is. The Eagles, maybe Jalen Hurts, maybe not. Washington doesn't know who their quarterback will be. If Dak's your guy and you're moving forward with him, you're ahead of the game in that division by miles. So uh, unless Daniel Jones, you know, keeps improving and closes that gap, so I'm with Dan on him not being elite. But sometimes you got to pay these guys like they are elite. We've seen that with numerous quarterbacks in the NFL. So sometimes you just got to do it, even though you may know he's not special and not one of the top two, three, four quarterbacks in the league. You know, maybe circumstance dictate you got to keep him and you got to overpay him. Further, Mel, let me just throw this back. Hold on a second, Dan, because Ed Werder came on this show the other day and said, regardless of trading him, if the Cowboys Mm -hmm. don't get a long-term deal done with Dak, they would be negligent if they don't take a quarterback at number 10, where they currently sit. Now, you don't have any of the five still Mm -hmm. sitting there, but why do you think of that? If they don't get a deal done with Dak, but he's on the tag, should the Cowboys take a quarterback? 
I don't think one will be there, Greeny. I think you have to move up. You would be a 10, and you would be on that fringe of maybe being able to go up two, three, four spots to get that quarterback. Problem you run into here is it's going to be you're going to give up some draft choice to go up and get that guy, and you're still not sure if he will be what Dak Prescott already is. You just don't know. Uh, you hope. That a Justin Fields and a Trey Lance and a Mac Jones will be really good, but you don't know. We know what Dak is. And I understand he's not super elite or elite, but he's a really good quarterback. And like I say, and in that division, uh, that's not a bad thing to have. That's going to put you ahead. That's going to make you the favorite to win that division. I also think offensive line's a neat area. Rayshon Slater from Northwestern, Elijah Vera Tucker mm -hmm. from USC would make sense. The cornerback, whether if it's not Sertan from Alabama, Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech. So I would rather use that pick on either a corner or an offensive lineman and have Dak as my quarterback than move Dak or do something with Dak there and have to try to figure out which quarterback do I like and which young quarterback I'm moving forward with. Uh, that would be a dangerous situation to put yourself in. Diana Rossini, help me. If, if the Cowboys don't get the long-term deal worked out with Dak and there is no reason to believe they will based on what has happened, how should we expect that to play out? They're going to have to figure out who's going to play the quarterback position. They're going to have to do that. And in terms of what they're thinking now, the thought process when I was talking to sources with Dallas just two days ago was that they're going to be able to work this out either way, whether it's the tag or the long-term deal. The conversations I was having was more about what they're going to do with that 10th pick and it's more in the direction of what Mel was just talking it's about with the offensive it? line which you know you think about Dallas we don't talk about them needing an offensive line uh, it's been a while because uh, they've always been so great there but we saw so many injuries last year so in terms of the organization the sense I'm getting from those that are working in scouting and in coaching right now it's that this is going to get hammered out. Canty what do you think? I, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, here's the thing. We're talking about this negotiation. It really isn't a negotiation. This is a stick <laughs> up by Dak Prescott because he has so much leverage. It's no gun, no mask. Put the money in the bag. At this point, why would Dak settle for a deal that's below <laughs> market when he's only one season away from true free agency in the market being able to command over $40 million a year? It doesn't make sense for Dak Prescott to settle for a team-friendly deal. If Jerry Jones wanted something like that, he would have done it a couple of seasons ago. Just last week the San Diego Padres paid Fernando Ooh. Tatis Jr. four years before they had to and gave him 340 million dollars. Do you know why? Because it gave them the flexibility to be able to spread that hit of their payroll over 14 years. If the Cowboys were so concerned with the structure in the salary cap they would have done this deal years ago. Dan exactly. I'll give you the final word go. Baseball doesn't have a salary cap so that's why Tatis can you think you pay him whatever you want. I, I'm not saying Dak Prescott should should play for $20 million. Do I think that Dak can look? Because here's the thing. Chris, you know this. You go into the NFL as a young player with one goal. Get to a second contract. Now, that second contract is going to always be different for guys. We know that's going to happen for Dak Prescott. He has earned a ton of money. So now the question is, does Dak just want to get a ton of money? Like, that's it? Because once you, as a good quarterback, take a ton of money from your football team, team success. It's never happened in the NFL. So Dak can ask himself, maybe I will take less than what the market demands, but still get a ton of money and go, what Patrick did. Be another offensive lineman. Go get us a better. So um, just, I'm just checking. I'm asking for a friend, though. Did, did Jalen Hurts do, do that? Take a team from, did, did he? I mean, you know, take less money. Did, did Lamar Jackson, did Justin Herbert? I'm just asking for a friend. Did Kirk Cousins at 45? I don't know. But the final thing I will say that um, Mike Fisher was saying, in the <laughs> which I don't think people think about, he was saying you could be in quarterback purgatory for the next 10 years or more. It's not like other teams look and say, we don't need a quarterback. The Washington Commanders have been trying to get a quarterback, really, since 1991. In the last 12 years, they spent a number one draft pick six times. Let that sink in for a second. I'm sorry, five first-round picks in the last 12 years trying to find a quarterback. 
This is the hardest position to fill. My thing is, is this. Since this is the hardest position to fill, it's a little easier to fill in, say, linebacker. It's a little easier to fill in, say, running back. It's a little easier to fill in wide receiver. Why not fill in all of those kind of places first, like San Francisco did, like the Eagles did, and try and work with what you have as far as quarterback goes? That's all I'm saying. I get a lot of flack and a lot of grief that say, you know, you're not really a Cowboys fan. You're just a Dak Prescott lover. You don't care about the guy. No, I'm a diehard Cowboy fan. You don't have memorabilia as old as I have because you're just a Dak Prescott fan. My fandom was here long before Dak Prescott, and it'll be here long after Dak Prescott as well. All right, good people. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. And as always, I appreciate you guys. I've got some meetings i got to do to get ready for Vermont. A week from today, right about now, I'll be driving to Vermont, going to a state I've never been to, to help people that I've never met try and get their lives back in place. And that's a good feeling for me.